Let's look at another example. Now, in this case, uh, we've got, once again, we've got a voltage source here. This is a dependent voltage source, and it's dependent upon this voltage over here. So this is a voltage dependent voltage source, okay? So we really want to see if we can actually maybe find the currents, voltages, etc., in this particular problem. So how would we approach this? Well, look, this really lends itself, doesn't it, to a sort of a mesh approach. And we can define a mesh current like this. We'll call it the I1 mesh. Uh, mesh current like this, and we'll call this the I2 mesh. So let's first of all work with the I1 mesh, okay? So I1 mesh. Remember mesh, of course, we're just summing voltages, aren't we? Now, in this particular example, I'm going to assume that convention where I go up in voltage, I'm going to call it positive, and if I drop in voltage, I'm going to call it negative. So here we go, okay? I1 mesh, I'm going to start here. So we've got a 10 millivolt source, I'm going from a minus to a plus, so we're going to say that's a plus 10 millivolts, okay? All right, then I've got the I1 times 10K, and of course that defines my voltage as being which way? plus to minus, and so that's really what a minus, and that's I1 times that 10K. Coming down here, I1 is the lead current because I'm traversing around the I1 mesh, put a minus there, this is I1 minus I2, and of course that is times that 2K. And then I've got this last voltage over here, I'm going from a minus to a plus, so I'm going up, and I'm gonna say it's a plus 10, times that voltage VI. We're completely round the loop now. All of that is equal to zero. All right, now let's just continue to work with the I1 mesh. We've got I1 and I2 as an unknown, but we've also got this VI term here. So we really need to have a little look at VI. What is VI, perhaps in terms of this current, really I1? Now, <laughs> Let's think about this. This current is going in this direction, isn't it? Which defines a voltage plus minus. VI is defined the other way as plus minus that way around. So therefore we could say that this VI is really equal to a minus I1, isn't it? Times that 10K. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna simply put this VI term really into this equation over here. But I'm also going to take these terms, this guy, and this guy, and this guy over to the other side, okay? So we'll kind of do that really in one step. So what do we have? We have 10 millivolts, okay? Taking that to the other side, that becomes what? I1 times 10K, so that's an I1 10K. Um, taking all of this to the other side, that becomes what? A plus, this is I1 minus I2, and that is times, what, 2K. And then taking this to the other side, note that that would really be a minus, wouldn't it? Yes. Well, let me do that in two steps. Let me just take that to the other side. That is going to be a minus 10. And VI is what? Open up a bracket. That's a minus I1, isn't it? Times 10K. All right. So a minus times a minus is really gonna give me a plus here. So what I wanna really do now is collect all my I1s together and all my I2s together. So if I do that, I've got that 10 millivolts is really equal to, okay, uh, I1, and that is multiplied by, so you do this to check me here, but that is actually multiplied by 112K. And in my I2, term, of course, is, notice there is that minus sign there, and that really becomes a minus I2 times that 2K. And so we could say, look, I've got one equation now, it's actually in terms of I1 and I2. All right, let's work on the I2 mesh. Okay. So once again, we're traversing around in this direction and we're summing the voltages. So here we go, we're gonna start here. So what are we doing? We're dropping, that's a plus to a minus. So what is that? That is a minus 10 times VI, okay? Coming across this, let's put a minus, open a bracket, I2 is the lead current, so it's I2 minus I1, 
and that's multiplied by 2k. Coming on around, that is a minus, what is that? That's an i2 times that 1k. We're back to the beginning. All of that is equal to zero. All right, well, let's go ahead and put this value of v, vi really into this expression, see what we get, okay? So we've got a minus there, haven't we? So it's a minus times really a minus here, okay? And so what we have here then is what? We have 10, okay? And that is times the vi, which is of course this uh, 10k i1, okay? We'll just close that bracket there, all right? Then I'm just going to expand this guy out. So that's what is that? That's a minus, and that's 2k i2, isn't it? Yep, so I can say that's i2, if you like, times 2k. That's that term there. And then a minus times a minus gives me a plus, and so that's a plus, that's an i1, times 2k. And then I've got my minus i2 times 1k. And all of that is really equal to zero, all right? So let's, uh, let's work on this a little bit more. So that's, what is this here? That's going to be 100K, isn't it? I1, okay. And then I've got, um, what else have I got in terms of I1s? Well, uh, I've got this guy here, haven't I? So that's really a plus, isn't it? Uh, that's a 2K. I1, yep, so that's, that's got that guy there. And then what about I2s? How many I2s do I have? Well, I've got a minus 2K of them here, and I've got a minus 1K of them there. And so effectively, I've got what, a minus 3K, and that's I2, and all of that is equal to zero. All right, collecting my I1s together, I've got what? That is a 102, isn't it, K I1s? And if I take this to the other side, it's equal to what? 3K I2, yeah, all right. So I can now find an expression for I2, can I not? I can say, look, I'm gonna divide both sides by 3K. So I2 then is simply equal to this 102K I1, and that's divided by what? 3K. And that means that is equal to, if we work that out, that is actually just 34 times I1. All right, so I've now got I2 in terms of I1. What can I now do? Well, I could now put this information, couldn't I, back into this I1 mesh current equation up here. Putting I2 then into our I1 mesh current equation, what do we have? We have 10 millivolts is equal to, uh, this is I1, isn't it, times 112K, and then that is what, a minus, this will be simply 34, I1 times 2K, all right? So look, if we work this out, we have that 10 millivolts is equal to, that's 112K minus, working that guy out, that would be 68K, close the bracket, I1s. And so therefore I can say that my current I1 is really equal to 10 millivolts, that's divided by 44K, and that is equal to, a bit of rounding, 0.227 times 10 to the minus six amps. Okay, so if we now wanted to get I2, well, we could just use this guy here. We can say that I2 is equal to 34 multiplied by what we've just found, which is a 0 0.227 times 10 to the minus six, and that is equal to 7.718 times 10 to the minus six amps. Okay. All right, that's another example using a voltage-dependent voltage source.